So I want to talk about the distributed constraint satisfaction problem. Uh, well, before we do that, of course, we got to talk about just the constraint satisfaction problem, which is uh, fairly straightforward. You have a set of variables, uh, x1, x2, x3, and uh, each variable, of course, can have a value. And uh, let's go over to n, and then x1 can have a value which is taken from domain 1, uh, domain 2, and so forth. And then you also have a bunch of constraints. We'll call them P. Um, so you have P1, P2, P3, and these are constraints over you know some of these variables. X1, da 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 da, Xn, and so forth. And these of course can be you know either true or false, right? Uh, either the constraint can be happen or can be violated. If it's false, that means the constraint is violated and you're out of luck and doesn't work. So basically the problem is you have to assign a value to each one of the variables so as to not violate any one of these many constraints. Uh, so for example, uh, okay, so that's the distributed constraint satisfaction problem in the, the in the sorry constraint satisfaction in the, dis the distributed part is simply the fact that we're gonna, each one of these variables, generally, you know, uh, but uh, each one of these variables is gonna be owned by a different agent, right? So an agent is gonna own each one of these variables and an agent can change the value of that variable. Um, and uh, that's it. And maybe the agents have, you know, can only observe certain constraints uh, it doesn't have to be that way, although it's usually that way. It could be that an agent owns, you know, a couple of variables, uh, that kind of stuff. But mostly, that's the idea. So let me just uh, give a couple of examples so you can see that this is not uh, just of theoretical interest. Uh, class scheduling. So an example you might be familiar with is the class scheduling problem. Uh, let's say you have a bunch of classes you, you're trying to put together, say a four-year college degree or five years, whatever, and uh, you have certain classes you have to take, you know, C1, C2, C3, da, 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 C, you know, 100, whatever. And uh, each you have to figure out when are you going to take each class. And of course, you know, some of these classes have prerequisites, like this class over here, C12, uh, might be a prerequisite for some other class. So that means uh, that those prerequisites will be part of the constraints. And uh, the classes themselves will be the variables. And the values will be the semester, right? So maybe this one is one, one, this one is two, you know, the semesters. Uh, semesters are the domain, uh, which is one, two, three, all the way to, you know, eight for four years, you know, two per semester, or maybe nine and ten for five years, uh, whatever. So, so those are, this is the, the domain, it's going to be the semesters, and the classes themselves are going to be the variables, variables, and the values are going to be, you know, the assigned to that and then the constraints are going to be like you know prereqs uh you know you might say no more you know no more than say five classes per semester right so that's sort of a general uh, requirement on all of these no more than five of them can have the same value um you know whatever you want maybe certain pairs of classes you know cannot be taken together at the same time or maybe you want to take certain pairs together, or rather take them together, etc. So all these constraints can be added as part of that. Uh, let me do another example here. Oops. So that's uh, that's a common example. I mean, you can uh, also do any kind of scheduling. So that that's uh, as kind of a scheduling problem. The the classes. Uh, as an example of as an instance of the scheduling scheduling problem, but you can think of you know like you know sh uh, shift scheduling like you might do at Starbucks. Uh, you know it's a very similar problem, right? So scheduling uh, like you might have uh, certain people, um, 
got to wear the morning shift. Uh, you have the afternoon shift and the night shift. Uh, night shift. And uh, the, so you can set those might be the variables and their value could be the people. And well, if it's just one variable for the morning shift, then you just have one person, you know, Bob is the value. Uh, if you have, if you need, say, you need three people in the morning shift, you can have three variables like, you know, M1, M2, and M3. And then you have assigned those variables for the afternoon. Maybe you only need two people for the night shift, just one. So there you go. You can do that. That'll be for a full day schedule. If you need a week schedule, you can do, you know, prepend these, you know, so you have variables for Monday, M1, Monday, and then Tuesday, M1. Tuesday M2. So for that scheduling, the shifts are the variables, uh, the values are the employees. And then, of course, the constraints are whatever constraints you have. You know, you can say, you know, no two people, uh, I'm sorry, no one, no one works two shifts. No one works, uh, no one can work. Like, you know, you don't want the same person working two shifts in the morning. That doesn't make any sense, right? No one works, uh, you know, M1 through M3 at the same time. So hopefully you can see how that's fairly easy to implement. Um, so you don't want Bob here and Bob here. Doesn't make sense. You might get paid twice for the same work, right? Uh, you know, you might not know consecutive shifts, that kind of stuff. So that's, you know, example of shift scheduling. There's many, many other types of shift scheduling that are very similar, right? Uh, you know, like in a, a hospital operating table, operating uh room scheduling right it's the same idea I mean, you just have to schedule rooms in a hospital and schedule the doctors to operate at that time etc you know manufacturing systems have these kind of uh, scheduling problems also factoring okay uh, so those are scheduling problems they're all these are all instances hopefully i just showed you these are all instances of uh, constraint satisfaction problems and they can be solved in a distributed manner if you want uh, another one is the uh, distributed R well we don't have to even call it distributed uh, these sensor networks sensor networks they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes now uh, but the idea is you know you have uh, sensors through another field uh, in maybe randomly or whatever. And each one of them, you know, let's say each one of them can look in a particular direction at a time, only one direction at a time, right? And, uh, you know, depending on what you need, it's usually the case, depending on what you need, you might want, like you might want all of them to look in different directions so you cover the most area, or maybe you want like, oh, uh, there's something happening here. And uh, you want these guys, all of them, to focus on that thing that might or might not be happening there, right? Um, so the sensors are the variables, right? These are your variables here, your x ones and x two, right? So x one and x two, and then their value, of course, is the direction in which they're looking at, and the constraints are going to represent. Uh, you know, what you want. Do you want everybody to be looking in a different way or not, or at the same uh, place? And uh, you see, this is one case where the distributed part makes a lot more sense because in a realistic situation, these are sensors. These are like little machines, little computers sitting around there. And uh, they actually, each sensor can only generally communicate with the guys next to him, right? And he can only see a little bit. So he has to make sort of a local decision based only on the information of you know the guys that are around him like this guy might only know about these other guys so he doesn't know what's happening over there so he has to make a local decision 
based on that. And so he has to try to avoid um, violating any constraints. Of course, remember those constraints can be global, right? So it could be a constraint like I need, you know, half the sensors up and half the sensors down. That's a global constraint. And this guy kind of hard because he doesn't know uh, what these guys over here are doing, right? And he's like, what? So, right, so that's the kind of stuff we look at. Uh, the distributed part comes in handy. Um, and so we try to solve these things distributed. So that gives you an idea of what the problem is. Now, how, so how do you solve it? How do you find the correct values for all these variables? Well, watch the next video.